Have you or your department commissioned any studies that this buyback plan is an effective use of taxpayer dollars to enhance public safety? Now that was important, but I wanna get back to that. We'll talk about that later. I wanna do a thought experiment here. If you wanted to commit a crime using a firearm in this country while following all of our gun control laws, what would you need to do? First, you need to take a couple of courses and then pass a test. Then you need to send an application in to the Canadian Firearms Program, along with references to your character. Now those references must include your spouse and any ex-spouses. Now you have to wait a minimum of 28 days for the Canadian Firearms Program to contact your references to see if they have any concerns about your mental health or about a history of violence. They'll do an extensive criminal background check. Now, if you want to own a handgun, there's more steps. You need to be a member of a gun range. And if you ever want to shoot that handgun, you need to call the police and ask them for permission, telling them when and where you're going to transport that gun. And once you get that permission, then finally, after all that, you can go to the gun range and use your firearm. Now remember the thought experiment. We're trying to commit a crime while following all the gun control rules in Canada. Now, do we really think that criminals are gonna follow any of these rules? No. The fact is that the only people who do follow these rules are law-abiding firearms owners. These law-abiding firearm owners actually have to call the police to ask for permission to do this activity. I've done this thought experiment to illustrate a point. We already have strong gun control laws in Canada that Canadian firearms owners support. And yet we still have firearm-related violence in this country that we need to fix. Let's look at the recent history of violent crime in Canada. In 2015, violent crime bottomed out. And then the Liberals were elected. Since then, violent crime has risen steadily every year. Now, over the past five years, the Liberals failed to spend over half of the $325 million that they promised to fight gun and gang violence. Meanwhile, they're about to embark on a multi-billion dollar plan to confiscate firearms from law-abiding gun owners. Now, government and economics are about trade-offs. When you spend a billion dollars over here, it means you can't spend a billion dollars on something else. Now, can you honestly say that we're spending enough to stop the smuggling of guns over our border? When we know that last year, 85% of firearms involved in crime were smuggled from the United States. Can you honestly say that we're spending enough to protect vulnerable youth from being inducted into a life of violent crime? Can you honestly tell me that we're spending enough to combat the scourge of gang violence in our cities? The fact is we aren't. We aren't spending enough on any of these things, which we know are directly responsible for the violence. I wanna go back to the beginning of this video when I asked the minister have if they've done any analysis or have any studies to show that their plan to confiscate legal firearms at the cost of billions of dollars in taxpayer money will have any impact on improving public safety. Listen to what he said. Minister, I have an engagement paper that was sent out by your department in October of 2018 that directly states under the heading International Experience that, quote, in all cases, the data does not conclusively demonstrate that these handgun or assault weapon bans have led to any reduction in gun violence, end quote. Your own ministry recognizes that there isn't data to support your buyback argument. Why are you wasting billions of dollars on a scheme that hasn't worked? Before I begin, I wonder if I could be permitted to actually complete an answer. If you're not interested and you would just like to read ahead, from your sheet, you can do that. But I'd like to be able to Go finish. Ahead. Is that okay? We took the decision to ban assault-style rifles because they were designed to kill. Um, we looked at uh, some very uh, careful standards around the definition, uh, which is contained in the order in council, and we are now setting about the launch of a buyback program so that we can get these guns out of our community because we owe it to the victims to make sure there isn't another tragedy or a mass casualty. The fact is you don't have any studies that demonstrates that this is going to enhance public safety. Have you or your department commissioned any studies that demonstrates that this buyback plan is an effective use of taxpayer dollars to enhance public safety? I've spoken with the victims. Uh, but have you commissioned a study that victims. proves this? Of course, we're studying the costing very carefully. You're studying it currently. You don't have a study. You don't have proof right now that it will. Um, M Mr. Lloyd. They don't have any evidence. It's clear that the Liberals would rather spend billions of taxpayer dollars dividing Canadians between gun owners and non-gun owners, punishing law-abiding firearms owners who don't vote for them. This is about politics and theater, not about public safety. 
Now, if the liberals were actually serious about tackling violent crime, they wouldn't even be embarking on this scheme. They would be tackling the root causes, which we know are smuggled firearms in the hands of organized crime, not the sports shooter who has to call the police to ask for permission to shoot his gun at a gun range. The ultimate objective needs to be about reducing violent crime in Canada. For those who care about gun control and improving public safety in this country, you should be the most upset because the Liberals are wasting billions of dollars on a scheme that won't work. That is why it is so important to hold the Liberals to account on this issue, because their billions of dollars in political schemes won't improve public safety. Tackling violent crime is an issue that I'm passionate about, and I know Canadians are passionate about. We need real solutions, not political games. Please share this video with your friends and your colleagues. Let's have a discussion about real solutions that can make our community safer. As always, thank you for watching.